Okay, so on last day uh, we have discussed about the body effect, and before that we have uh, uh, developed uh, common source amplifier using MOS, and we have uh, hopefully noticed that uh, this is the simplest architecture. Common source stage with no degeneration. If I have a discrete register like this. and you provide the input at this particular point, you obtain the output from the drain terminal and you have noticed the expression for the voltage gain if I consider the mod of this given by gm times rt, right. Actually uh, there is a phase reversion com common source stage, so if I consider if the input is something like that, uh, if the input looks something like that, then output will be and magnified version with a phase reversion, right. Okay, so we have also discussed about the, the limitations associated with this kind of uh, uh, structure because the gain was given by gm times rt, so it's a function of uh, gm, it's a function of temperature, it's a function of the bias point and uh, if I would like to increase the voltage gain, then what option do we have? Uh, I, can, I can increase rt to some extent right but you know that uh, once again uh, uh, in this particular expression we have just uh, uh, forgot about the other channel and modulation and other uh, second order effect there is a channel and modulation if i incorporate channel and modulation in that case uh, this expression will be different it will be given by gm multiplied with rt parallel r naught and then the expression of the voltage gain i mean the value of this voltage gain will be even less because you have connected something in parallel with Rd. Although R0 is large with respect to Rd, but if you connect something in parallel with Rd, then it will reduce the overall voltage gain. So we have, uh, we were searching what are the different options by means of which we can, we can increase the voltage gain. One option was, uh, I have uh, discussed this one in the last class, uh, we can increase Rd, right? But if I increase Rd, what happens over here, if you increase RD, that means if you have some particular current, uh, some drain current flowing, if you increase RD, then this drop will be more across this RD. So you have very less amount of uh, voltage swing available at the, at the drain source terminal, at the drain terminal. I mean, if I consider this drain terminal over there and source is already grounded, and uh, you know that uh, in order to ensure that this device operates in uh, in the saturation region, and that is the region of operation for, for, them, for this device uh, to be acting as an amplifier, in that case, uh, the drain source voltage should be greater than the overdrive voltage, gate source minus which is short. So you cannot have a very lower value uh, at the drain terminal, or at the output terminal. But still, uh, we are in search of increasing the, the drain resistance, RT value, right? So what happens if I, if I make it infinity? Suppose RT equal to infinite. Suppose RT equal to infinite. I am making something that is infinite. Now, had this been the case, if RT is equal to infinite, then you understand that there is actually there is uh, 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 no current flowing. It's an open circuit kind of thing. From from this uh, supply line, from this VDD to this uh, drain terminal, this is basically an open circuit kind of thing. Okay, so you can't make it infinite, but you can make it large. But if you make this particular value very large, then this might affect the corresponding drain current, right? Because if you increase this uh, resistance over there. Uh, then it will uh, make the corresponding drain current small. So I have two options or I have two limitations over there or rather two challenges over there. I cannot increase RT to that extent so that it is acting as an uh, open circuit over there. I need to provide some constant bias current, right? I have to provide some bias current over there from VDD to this uh, drain terminal. Now that happens under DC condition, bias condition, I have to provide some bias current and whenever I perform the corresponding small signal analysis, in that case, uh, this particular element will behave differently. So I have to identify that particular element. Now had this been a resistor RD over there, so you understand that the effect of this resistance will be same, whether I uh, analyze in the DC domain or analyze in the uh, small signal domain. Because always it, it will obey the Ohm's law, V is equal to R into I. It will obey this Ohm's law every time. 
So I have to find out some other element which will behave differently in DC condition and in AC condition or small signal condition. Right? So can't be a resistance simply. It will be a resistance, but the, the value of this resistance will vary. Okay? And I am in search of some resistance value which is large enough. And if you remember from your previous knowledge that uh, out of the different elements that we have already studied, the current source could have been picked out for this particular element. Why? Because you know that for current source uh, under DC condition, it will provide some constant bias current over there. And under AC condition, it will provide some resistance which is typically large. Typically large. Ideally, it should be infinite. The ideal resistance, I mean, the ideal for, for an ideal current source, the resistance value is equal to infinite. Internal resistance should be infinite, or voltage it should be zero, ideally. Practically, you know that uh, the, the, uh, the internal resistance for a voltage source is equal to few ohms, and for a current source, it is uh, very large. Okay. So, instead of, have, instead of having RD over there, instead of having RD over there, what I can do, I can place one current source between the supply to this, it is the ID1, from supply to this drain terminal. Now the next question is then how can I implement this current source? We understand that this current source will behave differently. And it will provide some constant current over there and under uh, small signal condition, this current source would have been replaced by means of its equivalent resistance. Right, that is not equal to infinite. It's a, it's a practical current source. But how can you realize this current source? Yes, MOS is saturation. Now, you understand that MOS is having three terminals. Okay, um, for the timing, I am just forgetting about the fourth terminal, the body terminal. Let's assume that MOS is having only three terminals. Get, drain, source. Now, current source is having only two terminals. Right? Only two terminals. So, I have to... So, externally, I can have access of only two terminals out of three terminals. So all you have three terminals, get, drain, and source on a MOS. But whenever you use that particular MOS, suppose one MOS circuit is one, one MOS is there, you have three terminals, get, drain, source, be it an N MOS or P MOS, you have three terminals externally. I mean uh, internally this uh, particular MOS is having three terminals, but externally when you connect this MOS as a as a current source in any circuit, then it should have only two terminals. Now, as you have mentioned that uh, in order to use this uh, MOS as a current source, this MOS has to be operated in the saturation region. So, first of all, the MOS has to be on. Right? Now, here you see that uh, this particular uh, MOS is an N MOS. So, therefore, if I want to make it on, the voltage between this gate terminal and source terminal should be higher, it should be plus minus something like that. If I call this voltage say V1, then that voltage should be greater than the threshold voltage. That is the first factor. Now, if this V1, if this V1 is greater than VTH, the threshold voltage of this N MOS, which is eventually positive, then you understand that uh, this MOS will be on. Okay? And then, although in the DC sense, you can say that, okay, I am having uh, three terminals over there, this terminal, this terminal, this terminal. But between this and this, between gate and source, you have already connected one battery, V1. So that externally, you have only these two terminals left. Externally, you have only these two terminals left. This terminal and this terminal, which you can control. Okay? Internally, okay, there are three terminals, gate, source, and drain. But externally, when you connect this particular device in a circuit, then you have only two terminals available to you. Terminal number one, terminal number two. Okay? And you understand that this is nothing but this is equivalent to terminal one to terminal two, some current. 
okay some current will be flowing from terminal 1 to terminal 2 you understand you can recognize that uh, terminal 1 is basically the drain terminal here and terminal 2 is the source terminal okay in most of the cases uh, you have already seen for this circuit also for this amplifier circuit also this source is grounded right so typically what you find this terminal this second terminal terminal number 2 typically this is connected to the ground terminal typically this terminal is connected to the ground terminal this one this is the ground terminal and this terminal can be any arbitrary terminal any arbitrary terminal any arbitrary node in the circuit so what does this particular it sends some current from some arbitrary node 1 to some ground terminal you have some arbitrary node in the circuit so from that node to the ground you have to connect some something some current source from any arbitrary node in the circuit to the ground terminal then you can use this kind of architecture this kind of connection okay now since it's an n mos and from your understanding in the previous class that always i would like to avoid the body effect as far as practical now for n mos your body terminal is connected to what ground so if, if i connect my source terminal of this uh, of this n mos to ground that means this VSB, the voltage difference between the source terminal and the body terminal that is equal to zero, that means there will be no body effect. So every time I encounter any such uh, NMOS device in my circuit, I will always try to connect the source terminal to the ground as far as practical. Okay. So fine. So this kind of architecture, what does it do? It provides a current from some arbitrary node in the circuit to some ground terminal and that can be done using an NMOS like this. Now let us come to this part, okay, let me erase that part, okay. Now let us come to this circuit, what happens here, is it the same, no. Does it inject current from some arbitrary terminal to some ground terminal? No. It is injecting current to some supply, to some power supply to some arbitrary terminal in the circuit. Is the problem clear? So for this kind of scenario where uh, you have some current source, connected between the power supply to uh, some arbitrary node in the circuit. So this NMOS cannot be used. So what can I do? Instead of using an NMOS, I can use PMOS instead. So therefore, uh, it will be something like that. So let me use that part. Yeah, let me use that part. Now, since we are using PMOS, Oh, the previous circuit. Okay, let me explain this one first. So, it's PMOS, three terminals, once again, get source drain. And you know that if I want to use, uh, if, if this particular PMOS is on, then obviously the gate source voltage difference mod of VGS should be greater than mod of uh, VTHP over there because for PMOS the corresponding threshold voltage is negative. 
for n MOS to be on, the gate voltage should be higher than the source voltage by at least one switch. Now for PMOS, the gate voltage should be lower than the source voltage by at least one threshold or source voltage should be higher than the gate voltage by at least one threshold. So therefore, take a look at the polarity of the battery. Source is at the higher potential. So typically, this is my source terminal identified by this arrow. So this is the source terminal, this is the gate terminal. So source is higher than gate by at least one threshold because V1 is greater than mod VTH. Suppose VTH is equal to 0 minus 0 0.5 volt. And here it is, suppose this V1 is equal to say 0 0.6 volt. Okay, so the device is on. And if I uh, provide the, if, if the voltage difference between this 1 and 2, this two terminal is met accordingly, then I can use this device as, as a current source. Now, what about the direction of this current source? I mean, the direction of the current, the direction will be from source to drain. So, Okay, so the direction, so this is equivalent to, okay, let me take one. So this is equivalent to, you are having this thing, terminal 1 to terminal 2, there is no doubt about that. But what about terminal 1 over there and what about terminal 2? Typically, since you have already, uh, you have already known what is body effect, now, in order to get rid of body effect for P type of MOS, P MOS, what we should normally do, we connect the source to VDD. Because the bulk is connected to VDD, body is connected to VDD for P MOS. If I connect the source to VDD, then source to body, source to bulk difference is equal to zero. So typically the source is connected to the supply, power supply. Right. So I can identify the point one or the node one to be exactly equal to your supply line. Because this is a, remember this is the source terminal. And this is the drain terminal. For PMOS, the current flows from source to drain. And for NMOS, the current flows from drain to source. For NMOS, to get rid of body effect, we connect the source to ground. And for PMOS, to get rid of body effect, we connect the source to VDD. Okay? So this terminal number one is your source terminal, which is eventually connected to supply. And terminal two is a floating terminal. You can connect it every time, any time in the circuit. Right, for NMOS, source is connected to ground, and drain is a floating terminal. You can connect this drain terminal anywhere in the circuit. Similarly, here also you can connect the drain terminal anywhere in the circuit, terminal number two. Okay. So now try to identify whether whether I can connect any kind of thing, whether this is, uh, whether I can place this one over there, yes or no. Right? Because this one is nothing but your VDD and this is any, any terminal in your circuit. Okay? So now the question is that using your MOS, either in MOS or PMOS, operating in the saturation region, you can realize this as a current source. The only thing that you have to ensure is that you have to provide corresponding bias voltage between the gate and the source, so that the device remains on. Now what about the characteristics of such a device in the saturation region? You already know that this is the corresponding characteristics. It looks something like that. If I just observe, now remember now we have only two terms. Forget about the gate. Externally, I am having only these two terminals available to me. One is the drain, second one is the source. Source and drain. These are the two terminals available to me. Because gate to source, that voltage difference, I mean, uh, the, we, have, we have created uh, the corresponding voltage difference between the gate and source so that the device remains on and device acts in the saturation region. Okay, so now I am having only two terminals, one and two. Now, what about the kind voltage characteristics? It's nothing but IDPDS. And this ID versus VTS graph for any MOS device is something like that. And we are interested in that particular zone where the device is in the saturation region. Now, the dotted line corresponds to the ideal case, lambda equal to zero, that means there is no channel in modulation. And this, this line, this farm line is called lambda not equal to zero. That means uh, you have some 
channel and modulation already embedded into that. So, dotted case, whatever the unknown value, infinite, that's the ideal current source, and for the firm case, bold case, the corresponding unknown value is given by 1 upon, one upon lambda i. Remember all these kinds of that, that I have shown over there, they are the, the practical current source. That means your R0 is there, R0 is not equal to infinite, but pretty large. Okay. So now, with this uh, understanding, let me now move to the connection. How does it look like? Yes, you can use, but not in that particular circuit. You can use MOS, but not in that particular circuit. Source star gate is a battery as a source star gate. Then is connected to VDD. Okay, then? Then gate is greater than the source by one threshold. So then the MOS is on. But if if drain is placed at a very high potential, I mean if if the drain is placed at say drain is placed at VDD, you are saying that drain is placed at VDD, right? And gate source equal to say, let let me let me let me consider. Okay. Let's let's take the threshold voltage to be, uh, say, let it be say 0 0.5 volt. It's an NMOS 0, 0 0.5 volt. Okay. And suppose VDD is equal to 3 volt. Supply is at 3 volt. VDD is equal to 3 volt. Right. Now what you're saying? You're saying okay. Let's connect. So this is my VDD. Let's connect one battery, something like that. You're saying now something like that. So, okay, so that difference, since it is 0.5 volt, let's make it 1 volt. Let's make it 1 volt. That's the problem. Now, one second, I'm having these two terminals. And uh, suppose, okay, then you have this amplifying MOS over there. V in, there you have V out. That is our query, isn't it? That is a problem with this circuit. Any one of you who can identify the problem? Device will be on, okay, fine. Get to source difference is one volt, one volt battery is there. Threshold voltage is 0 0.5 volt. EGS is greater than threshold voltage. You will be on. You connect the drain over there and you connect the source terminal to the drain of the lower. I mean, let me call this is as MOS1, M1, the amplifying MOS, and this is the second MOS, the load MOS, M2. Sorry, can you be out of the bottom? What happens to this circuit? What happens to this circuit? Do you really think that uh, this MOS M2 will act as a current source? What do you see on this? What is the idea? The device will act in the saturation region if and only do, do you think that this, this device will be will be acting in the saturation? And forget about this uh, your this body effect. Body effect will be there. Yes or no? What about source potential? Source potential of this MOS M2. Source potential of this MOS. V out. Is it fixed? No. It's not fixed. What about the bulk potential? Typically for NMOS, the bulk potential is ground. For NMOS, what is the body potential? Ground. For PMOS, body potential is equal to V ready. So therefore, the VSB is not fixed. VSB is not fixed. So what happens to the circuit? Special voltage will vary. It's not fixed. And what about the direction of this current? The direction of this current is from some VDD to some RVT node. 
Now, had this been the case, so I cannot connect the drain to the VDD. Rather, I should connect the source to the VDD. Source to the VDD. Why? Because so if source is connected to VDD, then source to body, that difference is equal to zero. So, which must to select? PMOS. Right. Last day, hopefully, have seen the uh, common source stage in degeneration. Right? Where you have one register connected between the source terminal and the ground terminal. I don't remember that one. Last we have seen, okay, we have a register over there. Something like this. RS. And you have noticed the corresponding expression for the voltage gain. What was that expression? This expression was something like that. I mean, the mod AP, if I write, this mod AP was given by GM RD by 1 plus GM RS. Right? Which can desensitize the voltage gain variation. Isn't it? Because you have GM in the numerator as well as in the denominator. GMRT by 1 plus GMRS. Now, in the limiting case, if GMRS is much, much greater than 1, then uh, your expression is nothing but RT upon RS. It can desensitize the corresponding case in the GM value or in the temperature value. Now, there you have some resistance over there, RS. Connected between the source of M1 to the ground. Right? So, what can I connect? I mean, over here, so this terminal is available to you. That is connected to ground terminal. So, you have some MOS, either NMOS or PMOS. Either of NMOS or PMOS, you have to select over there. You have only two terminals available to you. One is the drain, second one is the source. Okay? This terminal is connected to ground, this one. So, which MOS to select? So, you have to select N MOS whose source is connected to this. Right. So, therefore, what you can do, you can simply, you can simply have, okay. Will it work? It's not here. Let me be honest. Will it work? Will it work? Yes or no? Get to source, you have V1 dash. Suppose this V1 dash is greater than the threshold voltage. Right? And suppose this particular MOS is acting in the saturation medium. Is acting in the saturation region. Therefore, it acts like a current source. So you have some RS over there. GMRT by 1 plus GMRS. So now this time this RS is replaced by means of some current source. But actually don't do that. Because here the value of this RS is very, very large. Something is there in the denominator, so therefore the gain value will drop. We don't want this, but I can do that over there. So that this uh, body effect can be eliminated. Okay. Well, so let's consider the, our previous circuit, common source stage, with one resistor connected between the supply, power supply to the output terminal, the drain terminal. So already you know that this is my uh, amplifying device, amplifying MOS M1, with some proper biasing P1, and this is my input signal that I want to amplify. And previously, you have one register between the VDD to the drain of this MOSM mode. Now, this time, this resistance, this particular discrete register has been replaced by means of one current source. PMOS current source with uh, source connected to VDD. This is the source terminal connected to VDD. And uh, between gate to source, you have uh, this uh, V2 voltage. And this has been ensured that V2 is greater than the mod of VTHP for the second MOS, M2. Okay, so from here to here, what you can expect from here to here, what is the resistance experienced by this R0? This resistance simply R0. How to identify? Suppose in isolation you have this device, 
that is the device in isolation actually keep uh, that device is there in, in your uh, actual circuit and suppose i have brought it out over there and uh, this is my circuit and this is the part of your circuit part of the resistance that you would like to use in your actual uh, amplifier circuit and i would like to find out the resistance between this terminal and this terminal how to find out the resistance you draw the small signal model first you have three terminals gate source drain right gate to source suppose this voltage is v1 drain to source you have this voltage dependent current source gm v1 basically it's a mos and you have this r naught okay now between gate and source you have some v2 voltage in the small signal model this is equivalent to simple short circuit right so gate and source they are shorted over there okay what else then i am having these two terminals available to you i mean drain and source okay so i have to connect some external voltage from outside let it be vx measure the current ix find out the ratio vx upon ix that will give you the resistance this is a two terminal device so no question of input resistance and output it's only one resistance will be there okay what is that v1 is zero so that is also gm v1 is absent over there so what is vx upon ix simply r not that is equal to 1 upon lambda e so whenever you find this kind of element in your circuit then you can simply replace this one by means of r not okay so now so common source stage with current source load now we are technically introducing formally are introducing this one common source stage with current source load this is the common source stage that i have already seen common source source is connected to ground v1 is the corresponding bias voltage v is the input signal that we are going to amplify and here you have this particular load this load is now represented by means of one current source and this current source is realized by means of the pmos why pmos hopefully you have understood why pmos so between the supply voltage over there, i mean between the voltage between the gate and source so that this mos operates in the saturation now that is a composite circuit a compound circuit now what happens in the corresponding small signal equivalent model in the small signal equivalent model what happens this one is obviously this should be shorted this is shorted and here this is also v1 is also absent this is a small signal equivalent model okay just all the uh, dc supply they are eliminated v1 and v2 simple short circuit then what about the so if i take a look at the this particular circuit over there then what about your uh, corresponding small signal model so there are two mos m1 and m2 m1 is amplifying mos and m2 is the mos correspond to the load or current source so for mos 1 you have this this three terminal gate 1 source 1 and drain 1 gate 1 to source 1 what you have you have some v in that is a vgs1 v in between gate 1 to source 1 so therefore you have between drain to source you have a voltage dependent current source gm1 vgs1 and you have some r01 i am considering the channel modulation for the mos m1 as well and between v out or rather uh, and here v1 and v2 they are connected together drains of m1 and drain of m2 they are connected together right you don't have the third terminal for mos you have only two terminals drain and the source where is the source connected at power supply that means ac ground so drain v2 and source source 2 they are connected by some ro2 and source 1 and source 2 both of them are connected to ac ground source 1 and source 2 both of them are connected to ac ground source 1 is also connected to dc ground but source 2 is connected is not connected to dc ground source 2 is connected to power supply in the composite model source 1 is connected to source 1 is connected to dc ground source 2 is connected to power supply in the small signal model both of them are connected to 
AC ground. Clear? Any doubt? So then, so therefore, this is basically ground. This one is ground. AC ground. Okay. So now you have uh, R1 and R2. Uh, these two uh, resistances uh, they are in parallel. What is the equivalent resistance? Simply R1 parallel. Okay. What about then V out? V out is nothing but this current is flowing in the opposite direction. So V out is equal to minus GM1 VGS1 into R1 parallel R2. And uh, VGS1 is nothing but your V in. So then ultimately the voltage in expression becomes minus GM1 multiplied with R1 parallel R2. Is it a better one, better solution than the previous case? What do you feel? Yes. Last time what we have got, we have started with minus Gm times Rd. That was the initial expression for the voltage, minus Gm Rd. Then you know that, okay, it's not actually Gm Rd, rather uh, minus Gm Rd parallel R0. It's even less than that. Because R0 is typically large with respect to Rd. Now we are in the process of making Rd higher or approaching towards uh, R1. R1 is the maximum resistance that one can have from, from a MOSFET. Whenever I am realizing this MOS as a, as a current source. Okay. Then ultimately this expression says that minus Gm1 multiplied with R1 parallel R2. Is it larger? Yes. yes. Okay. R1 parallel R2 and Rd parallel R2. If you compare, this Rd parallel R2 is much much less as compared to R1 parallel R2. Isn't it? So this value is larger. So by virtue of this kind of architecture, you can you can make the voltage gain to some, I mean, you, you can increase the voltage gain to some extent. But still the problem remains. This voltage gain is no longer, is still a function of your temperature, it's a function of the bias. Because the presence of this GM value. All right. That can be done. But before that, let us let us try to have some in, whether any other uh, alternatives are available to us or not. Already you know that uh, the stability and the gain, there is a there, there is a trade-off between these two. If the gain increases, stability drops. Now let's try to have some solution. And obviously, this R1 uh, corresponds to the uh, RO for the NMOS and R2 corresponds to the R for the PMOS. So simply this mod uh, mod AP is nothing but GM1 into R1 in parallel R2 P. Okay. So now let's introduce another load in our analysis. What is that load? Now, so far we have seen that gate and source. Between gate and source, you have applied some voltage, some V1 voltage, so that the device uh, is on. Right. Either the gate voltage is higher than the source voltage by one threshold for NMOS, or for PMOS, the source voltage is higher than the gate voltage by one threshold, at least one threshold, so that the device is on. Now, here what we are doing is, here, gate and drain, gate and drain, they are connected. Simply sorted, gate and drain. They are connected together. Now, if you connect the gate and drain together, then typically you have only two terminals. The drain, because whatever is the voltage that you apply the drain, the same voltage is also applied to the gate. They are sorted. DC wise also, AC wise also. Simply sorted. So you have only two terminals available to you, drain and source, once again. But the difference between this connection with the previous connection was that the previously the gate and between the gate and source you have some voltage, right? But this time gate and drain they are already shorted. Now the question is that whether this whether this device can act as a current source or not. What is your say on this? Here we find that gate and drain they are already always connected together. That means the gate voltage. So here, so here you find that gate voltage is always equal to the drain voltage. What is the condition for saturation? The condition is that this drain voltage should be greater than the gate voltage minus the threshold voltage for of the source. Because basically this VDS should be greater than the VGS minus VTH. 
if I just forget about the source, so drain board actual absolute value of the drain voltage should be greater than the absolute value of the grade voltage minus the threshold voltage. So here Vt should be greater than Vg minus Vth. So if this condition gets satisfied, Vt greater than Vg minus Vth, then your device will be in the saturation region. Is it the case here? Yes. Because drain and gate they are equal. So drain is greater than gate minus threshold. So this kind of device will always remain in the saturation. Right. Two terminal device. Then the question is that what is the corresponding uh, resistance provided by this? Once again, I have to find out the resistance. Is it RO once again? Yes or no? I have to check. So for that one second, you have to draw the small signal model. So here you see that in the small signal model, you have this gate terminal, you have this source terminal, you have this drain terminal, and gate and drain they are shorted together. Fine. Previously, gate and source was shorted in the AC model, the small signal model. This time, gate and drain they are shorted. AC wise sorted as well as DC wise sorted. Because since it is DC wise sorted, it should be AC wise sorted. So V1 is the voltage. So that voltage is a non zero voltage has to be in the AC model it has to be a non zero voltage V1 and therefore you have some GM V1 uh, voltage dependent current source present between the drain and the source and if I incorporate channel and modulation you have some R0 over there. Okay. Then how to find out the resistance value? You connect so these two terminals are available to you drain and source. You connect some external voltage, test voltage from outside Vx and suppose this current is equal to Is drawn by the circuit, find out the ratio Vx upon Is that will give you the R out or output resistance provided by this connection, direct connected load. So what is that? So this is typically, so what is Is? So Is is having two, two components, one is the GMV1 component, this one and the second component is the current which is flowing through R0. Right? Because there cannot be any current flowing through this. This is open now. Gate to source, there is no connection. Clear? So GM V1 plus Vx upon R0. Now, what is the relation between V1 and Vx? Are they same or different? Yes, they are same because V1 is the gate potential, Vx is the drain potential. And gate and drain they are shorted. So V1 equal to Vx. So therefore, what we find? It's GM Vx plus Vx upon R0. <laughs> Okay, so if I calculate this uh, Ix upon Vx, this Ix upon Vx is relatively easy to calculate, that is nothing but Gm plus 1 upon R0. That means what? The conductance is the sum of two conductance. Conductance, Ix upon Vx is the sum of two conductance. One is the Gm or the Gm of your, uh, uh, that particular MOS, load MOS plus 1 upon R0. So what about the resistance then? Typically, what, is, what should be the resistance? If the conductances are, I mean, the equivalent conductance is the summation of two conductances, then what is the resistance? Parallel of the equivalent resistances. So, this R out is nothing but 1 upon GM parallel R0. So, R out is nothing but 1 upon GM parallel R0. And since 1 upon GM is much, much smaller with respect to R0, R0 is typically large. Now, since 1 upon GM is smaller with respect to R0, so that uh, equivalent combination, that, that parallel combination, is almost equal to 1 upon gm. So that value is almost equal to, although it is, so here we find that this R out for a direct connected load is given by 1 upon gm parallel R0, but since R0 is much much larger with respect to 1 upon gm, so typically this is nothing but 1 upon gm. So completely different scenario. Last time we have seen that uh, this current source load is providing a very high value of resistance, R0, in the form of R0, typically very large. And this time, this resistance value is very, very small, 1 upon gm. Okay, 1 upon gm only. It remains in the saturation, but the corresponding resistance value is given by 1 upon gm. Now, what advantage we are getting out of this if the uh, R out is 1 upon gm only? What advantage we are getting? Is it advantageous? What does say? Is it advantageous? Okay. Now let's have a connection, something like that. Last time you have connected one, R, in place of RT, you have connected one current source load. 
Okay, some current source load, load was there. This time, instead of uh, uh, connecting current source load, let's connect one direct connected load. Typically, what you have? Typically, you have some resistance over there, no? You have a resistance. That was the connection. VDD and you have some RD over there and this is the output voltage V out. Now previously this RD was replaced by current source load. This time I am replacing RD by means of some direct connected load. With the use of current source load what you have got the value of this voltage can has increased from uh, the mod of I mean the mod of maybe has increased from GM RD to GM R01 parallel R02. But still, the effect of GM was there. Now, if I instead of doing that, if I connect uh, one uh, direct connected load over there between the supply and the output terminal V out, then in the small signal model, it looks something like that. One upon GM to parallel R2. This is grounded, right? Then. This is the corresponding small signal model. Now between uh, drain one and source one, drain one and source one, from this terminal to this terminal, drain one to source one, you have basically three resistances are connected in parallel. One is the R01, R R01 for this MOS, M1. Second one is one upon GM2. Third one is R02. So now these three resistances are there between D1 and S1. Clear? Now you may argue that okay, for this kind of architecture, we are losing the benefit of uh, body effect. Yes or no? Benefit here, right? I'm coming to the benefit, but still, the the limitation is that okay, uh, we, we cannot get rid of body effect over there because it's an it's an NMOS over there, it's an NMOS and the source is connected to your uh, this output terminal. That might help. Now, what is the benefit that we're getting out of that? What about the now these three resistances are they are connected in parallel, one upon GM two, parallel R one, parallel R two, right? What is the effective, uh, what is the voltage gain? I mean, the, what is the expression for this voltage gain V out over there? What is this V out? So, this V out is nothing but minus GM PGS1, minus GM PGS1, and then this resistance, right? 1 upon GM2 parallel R1 parallel R2. Typically, this 1 upon GM2 is the smallest out of these three. R1, R2, they are typically larger with respect to them. 1 upon GM2 is smallest. So, that can be, I mean, that, that equivalent combination can be approximated to 1 upon GM2 only. So, then ultimately what I am getting? Ultimately, the expression of the voltage gain, I am getting it to be minus GM1 upon GM2. Right? Now, remember what was the, what, are, what were three such expressions for GM? One very familiar expression was square root of twice ID mu and C of W model. So, therefore, I can write this like, Square root of twice I D one mu and C of W by W by L one W W L one divided by square root of twice I D two mu and C of W by L two. Both of them are N MOS. So you have mu and over there, mu and over there, numerator denominator. What about the I D one and I D two? Are they different or same? Let's have a look. The current which is which is this kind is I D one. This kind is I D one flowing through M one. This kind is ID2 flowing through M2. Are they same or different? Same. same current because the current has no other place to escape. Right? So, same current, same NMOS. Both of them are NMOS, mu and mu and. So, same C ox, everything is same. So, difference lies in W by L only. So, ultimately, the expression for the voltage what you get is square root or minus square root of W by L1 upon W by L2. Is it a stable one? What do you feel? Is this gain stable? It's basically the ratio of two W by L. 
Max Master. Isn't it? Max Master. W by L1 by W by L2. The actual expression is something like that. Minus equality that particular. But approximately that is nothing but square root of W by L1 by W by L2. And the dimension cannot change with respect to temperature. So if we change the supply voltage, if we change the supply voltage from say 3 volt to 2.5 volt, right, then also you don't expect the dimension will be, change, will be changing. If the supply changes, for example, suppose your mobile, when you have some, initially some voltage is there, then the battery drops to 100% to some say 70%, to some say 50%. Then what happens? The supply changes, the corresponding voltage is changing. That might affect the, the drain current, the bias current, but that will not affect the, the dimension. Ultimately, it's a ratio of two dimension, W by L1 upon W by L2. So, this game is the, the most stable game out of the two other alternatives that we have already discussed. Then the question is that how can you increase the gain, a stable gain, but I have to increase the gain. How do you do that? Yes, so suppose you are increasing the, uh, so, uh, so typically what happens, the length is the same. For a MOS technology, it's a micrometer, say micron or nanometer technology, say 7 nanometer, say 15 micrometer. So the lens are same as far as the progression in the VLSA technology is concerned. Lens remaining the same for the different MOS. Only there is a change in the weight. So what I have to do, I have to increase the, so I have to increase this W2. W Suppose W1 is fixed, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I have to increase this, yeah, I have to increase this W1, W1 I have to increase, that means the width of the first MOS, the amplifying MOS, I have to increase, or you reduce the width of the second MOS, either you increase the uh, W1 value or reduce the W2 value. Now, if I increase W1, suppose W2 is constant, W2 is fixed, and I am increasing W1, what problem I am supposed to face? Can I increase it <coughs> indefinitely? Okay, as far as the compactness of the uh, your circuit is concerned, you cannot increase it. I1 plus BGD minus ID or D. No, it's an I1 like it's It's only about W. So, forget about so all this ID1, ID2. Whatever is the ID1 value? So, here you have ID1, here you have ID2, both of them are same. Ultimately, it reduces to the ratio of 2 W by L. W by L1 upon W by L2. But still, suppose, suppose I would like to have a gain of say 100, uh, gain of say 10. Gain of 10. Suppose I would like to have, I would like to design an, an amplifier, common source amplifier with drive connected load with a gain of say 10 or gain of say 5 for example. Now if it is 5, then you have to ensure that W1, that should be 25 times of W2. So that this mod AV is equal to 5. Gain of 5 is a, uh, is a moderate thing. So 25 times, so width is 25 times larger. For the first MOS, the width is 25 times of the second MOS. I mean, the, for the amplifying device, for the amplifying MOS, the width is 25 times of the your load MOS. It's not feasible to some extent. And moreover, if you increase the width, that will also introduce the capacity. Right. So as of now, we have not played with those W and L. We have considered, okay, these are constants. Now, if I incorporate this kind of, say, diode connected load, then uh, the gain will be stable. Gain will be stable, but at the cost of some other challenges. Okay. Okay, I think, yeah. Then ultimately, okay, that is the final expression. How to remember? Because uh, you don't expect that you have only one MOS or two MOS in your science. You might have more than uh, one MOS, right? So in that case, if the circuit is even more complicated, then what is the uh, generic expression for the voltage gain? So we have already seen that the expression for the something like that. Minus GM1 multiplied with 1 upon GM2 parallel R2 parallel R1, right? 
So this is basically given for your common source shift with degeneration, what was the expression? It was minus gm times rd by 1 plus gmrs. So here you find it is minus gm1 into something. So this is nothing but so you can realize this one, this voltage in expression like the mutual conductance of the amplifying device multiplied with the, the equivalent resistance as can be seen from this terminal to the ground terminal, from the output terminal to the ground terminal. You can have more than uh, one load over there. You don't have, suppose you have one MOS over there, you have another MOS over there, another MOS over there, you might be having so many MOS devices. So, three such MOS devices are there. Now, it is not possible for you to draw the small signal model always. It is not just possible. That will make your life even more complicated. Suppose I am having this MOS, M2, another MOS which is acting as a current source. Another MOS which is acting as a simple register. Can be. Suppose this RD, for example, this RD that we have, I can do that now. This RD, suppose, this is nothing but one current source, one resistance, simple, and say, Suppose this is the combination, say for example, suppose you have one RD, this RD is nothing but instead of having RD, you have one RD, one resistor and one current source and one diode. Now suppose you are asked to draw the small signal model for this combination. It's a tedious, clumsy. So what you need to do is that, the idea is that whenever you find this kind of architecture, very complicated one, then the expression of the voltage is nothing but minus the transconductance transconductance of the amplifying device, only one amplifier, only, I mean this M1 is acting as an amplifier over there for single stage amplification. So transconductance of this one minus GM, GM1 multiplied with the equivalent resistance as seen from this output terminal, output node to the ground. So here, from here to here you have this RO1 from, from M1 and from here to here you have 1 upon GM2 parallel RO2 for this load M2. And now if you have another current source over there, it's not open circuit, if you have another current source then what will be the corresponding resistance? Another RO, ROP? Uh, ROP, right? So it's not possible for you to draw the small signal model for all these three MOS devices, right? So that is the expression for so that is the final expression for this voltage gain. Even for uh, your uh, this kind of circuit, even for this kind of circuit that we have already seen last day, <coughs> common source states with degeneration, RD, RS. V in there, V out there. The mod AV was approximately equal to, or I can write, it's not like approximately, rather the exact value. It was GMRD by 1 plus GMRS. So, what is that? GM multiplied with the resistance seen between the drain terminal, this terminal to the AC ground divided by 1 plus GM of the amplifying device multiplied with the resistance seen from the source and AC ground. Although it is like GM RD on plus GM RS because you have only two resistors RD and RS but sometimes this RD might not be single RD. You might be having more than one such uh, elements. So in that case, uh, the expression of the voltage is nothing but GM
otherwise this one multiplied with the resistance seen between this terminal and the AC ground. This terminal and the AC ground, right? And divided by 1 plus GM multiplied with the resistance seen between the source terminal and the AC ground. Eventually that is not equal to GMRT 1 plus GMRS. It should be GMRT parallel or not. Because that can be neglect with channel modulation. It should be GMRT parallel or not. Because you have one resistance from here to AC ground, you have another resistance from here to AC ground. Right. Okay, so with this let me uh, conclude my today's discussion.